Matt Boucher, President and CEO, Fox Spring Company. Outstanding. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Crude Life Media Network, we're going to talk a little innovation, infrastructure, that sort of thing. But um, Clock Spring, that's the name. Huh? Talk to me a little bit about what your company does. Well, Clock Spring makes a, a variety of products, uh, all designed around uh, repairing and rehabilitating critical, critical infrastructure, including uh, you know, transmission pipelines, gathering lines, uh, refineries, petrochemical plants, Etc. Um, our products tend to be very highly innovative, highly engineered, and you know, designed to solve uh, mission critical problems in ways that are you know cost effective and uh, you know help with environmental and asset sustainability. What would be like an example of something like that? You know, maybe something you've done in the past where you know you guys have had to become either customized or specialized for for one of those projects. Clockspring was the first company ever to to uh, design, uh, certify, manufacture, sell, install a uh, composite repair sleeve for uh, the the reinforcement of transmission pipelines that have lost some of their integrity due to either corrosion or you know some kind of mechanical interference, like for example a uh, a backhoe hitting a transmission pipeline or something like that. Okay. Uh, the Bakken is uh, at capacity. They're looking at adding a significant amount of pipeline here in the next two, three years. Permian, same thing. Um, are, are you guys, is, is that the type of pipeline that you guys would get into, or are we talking about maybe something else? No, absolutely. We work on those pipelines all the time, and we, we consider those, broadly speaking, you know, uh, gathering lines or, or in some cases we call them midstream lines, right? They're not part of the sort of the big transmission system, but they feed into it. And, you know, we work on those pipelines all the time, whether they're, they're older pipelines coming from, you know, older areas and they need to be kept in service or they're new lines and, you know, something happened during the construction phase of those where, you know, some kind of damage was created where, we're working with, with, you know, companies to make sure that those pipes are going to be safe to transport, you know, whatever it is they're transporting. In this case, you're talking primarily about crude, but, um, yeah, that's what we do. So anything from the composite to, I don't know if you guys get into sensors or have to uh, work with people with sensors, but talk to me a little bit about innovation within your industry. What have you seen change in the last 10, 15 years? Well, you know, well, we've seen change a lot. And by the way, um, we make uh, valve products that can be installed, you know, on a line while it's in operation. So if somebody needs to, you know, put in a diversion or a bypass or, you know, just want a place where they might want to switch it from point A to point B, um, we make valves that are capable of doing that and can be installed while the system's under pressure. Um, we, uh, we are now making flange gaskets that, uh, you know, are type certified to be fugitive emission free. And, you know, we're not just talking about vapors. We're also talking about, you know, liquid coming out of a, a flange location. Um, and, you know, every, every drop counts, so to speak. Um, you know, mostly what we've seen over, you know, the last 10 years is a need to, you know, continue to operate assets um, that are either um, beyond their their use, beyond their original design life, or uh, approaching their original design life. And you know, we work with customers to to keep those assets in service, and we do that through our composite products, through our valve products, through our gasket products. Uh, the Meridian Energy Group, they're building the Davis Refinery out in um, Belfield, North Dakota, and the, the kind of the pipes and the and the gaskets and that sort of thing is is what they cited as an example of a way to reduce emissions. You mentioned that too that um, you know these new gaskets you have are reducing emissions or something like that. Just explain that a little bit more. How, how does that uh, reduce emissions? Sure. So it really all comes down to you know the material uh, from which you design the gasket or manufacture the gasket. And then specifically, you know, how, how, you, how you form that gasket. In our case, you know, we've introduced the full metal gasket. And, 
and yeah, we did steal it off of that movie name. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we introduced the full metal gasket, and, and, you know, one of the key components of our full metal gasket is that the gasket is made out of the same metal as the surrounding flange material. So that means that our gasket is going to expand and contract, you know, whether it's through heating and cooling or cycles on the, on the infrastructure. It's going to expand and contract at the same rate as the metal around it. So, you know, just by that alone, the gasket's going to stay, you know, more tightly sealed. On top of that, we have a, you know, we have patented uh, V, what we call Delta V grooves in the, in the flange itself. And when the, the, the flange is bolted together, those grooves that we specially machine in using, you know, customized CNC equipment, um, collapse down a little bit microscopically, but they collapse down and they form a super tight seal. And uh, there's actually three seals that get formed. So even if one of them isn't working, you know, you've got a lot of redundancy built in. And the idea is once you form that tight seal and if the gasket then moves uh, at the same rate and, you know, with expansion and contraction as the metal around it, then, you know, you're not going to have any, any, you know, anything getting out of that flange location. That is typically the weakest point from, uh, from that standpoint where you're going to see admission. Another thing that came out of uh, some of the th- discoveries of the Davis refinery um, was, and sorry to bring that up, but their their first refinery in 50 years, so their technology has to be like top of the line. We've been following it, very impressed with their technology. So what you're talking about kind of reminds me of what they have going and probably even validates the same thing, which is uh, one of the things that's happening up there in terms of, in theory, is that you know there's some of this new technology and some of these gaskets and et cetera is really lowering the maintenance cost and the you know kind of the follow up cost. Is that a, now you you sound to me like you guys are actually putting this into practice that sort of thing. Have you had enough time with your new technology to see whether you know this new innovative uh, uh, pipelines and composites and gaskets are they lowering the maintenance cost for people? You know they absolutely are. Um, you know, with the, with the new gasket, obviously, we just announced it last week, so we don't have a, a ton of data. But with our other products, we have a ton of data. You know, if you wanted to talk specifically about the gaskets, you know, down here on the Gulf Coast where I live, and, you know, of course, we have tons of refineries and petrochemical plants down here. Um, you know, there's a whole industry that exists of, of folks who just monitor plants for fugitive emissions. And it's people walking around with specialized backpacks on that have snippers you know, sniffer wands, and it's drones that are looking for emissions and things like this. And, you know, I mean, the company's here, and, and, and let's face it, I mean, the refineries here, they're not brand new, right? I mean, ExxonMobil, Beaumont, I think, was built, opened in, like, 1918 or something like that. Um, they, you know, they spent a lot of money just checking for those emissions. Um, you know, when it comes to our composite repair products, you know, our products can typically be used to, you know, seal up a leaking defect and we can do that on gathering lines, um, to reinforce a pipe, uh, et cetera. Um, you know, you, you can do that work typically in, you know, 45 minutes to an hour compared to, you know, how long it would take you to, you know, cut the thing out, replace it, um, you know, figure out what you're going to do with the material inside it while you're doing that, all those sorts of things. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of money to be saved from this new technology. It's amazing uh, just how some simple things like uh, some angles and, little bit of a material added here can just really become very environmentally sound really at the end of the day um what how, how many different i mean i'm sure you guys are in quite a few but uh and branch outside of the energy industry but give a little plug for your company how many different uh um, you know shale plays are you guys in cities are you in that sort of thing and um you know in, in, in the energy industry outside the energy industry we're, you know, we're in the bar, pocket, we're in the Mar- Marcellus, we're in Utica, we're in, you know, we're, in, we're everywhere. Uh, we sold our products last year to um, companies in 70 different countries. Um, I don't know how many cities, uh, huh. more than 70. <laughs> um, 
but uh, you know a whole bunch of different places. Uh, you know, we have several hundred tra- uh, customers that you know we're doing business with. You know, every single year, and and you know you hit it right. It's, it, it's our ability to help them manage their critical infrastructure, do so in a way that is you know uh, cost effective. Do so in a way that is, you know, more friendly to the environment, um, and that, you know, that of course is critically important. And and by the way, do so in a way that enhances safety, right? Because if you you start talking about, um, you know, not having to weld on a pipe or not having to use heavy lifting equipment or or things like this, and these are all things that that, that our products enable. You know, you end up with with a safer environment, right? If it, you're you're not likely to get hurt doing something if you don't do that thing, and and that's really something that we spend a lot of time, especially when we're thinking about new products, um, thinking about is is how can we figure out a way to take some steps out of this process that might be dangerous steps. Anything that uh, we forgot to mention? Anything that uh, you wanted to reiterate? Uh, I kind of like to give a uh, guest the final word. That way the question isn't framed by me and they can take it whatever direction they want. So uh, kind of final thoughts. Uh, the floor is yours. That's great. You know, we, uh, we, we of course, have a number of products, and, and you know, we love for people to learn about them at our website, which is www.clockspring.com, and that's Clockspring just like the way it sounds. Um, but more importantly, I want to make people aware that we have a staff of engineers here available at the country, at the company, I'm sorry, you know, including PhD-level engineers um, who, uh, you know, would love to work with, with people on critical problems, uh, that they may, may be trying to solve, um, and we'd love to work with them. 